Happy Tuesday everyone! In today's video, I'll share three setups that I think are working really well right now to benefit from the current volatility. We'll walk through the setup along with examples of that setup from today's activity. Now before we look at the setups, I think it's important to first establish that there is in fact increased volatility. So the way we can do that is by using our 15-day live scanner analytics. This is data that tells us that, hey, is volatility increasing or is volatility decreasing from the marketplace? So here's a snippet from our volatility box platform. Here's what it looks like live, just so you can see it inside of the platform. But let's take a look at the screenshot to analyze this. June 13th is where volatility had peaked most recently over the past 15 days with 400 plus trades on our live scanner. And that's a lot. This is something that doesn't typically happen. After June 13th, you can see volatility slowly starts to subside all the way up until June 17th. June 17th, we have a small spike up. That's a Friday, so you could attribute that volatility spike to a bit of that as well. But all around this week, June 13th to June 17th, high volatility. Now after that, June 20th, all the way through June 24th, you can see how volatility is much lower. It's increasing, sure, but it's also much lower in that it's well below that 200 trade count. So dramatically less compared to what we saw just the previous week. Now fast forward into this week so far, Monday was very little volatility. However, today that spiked up. We're now at 200 plus trades. And usually once we see something like this in terms of a spike, that volatility continues for at least a few more days. So I'm looking at this volatility to continue into the rest of this week. That's why I think this video is all the more relevant. Now the question comes in, if the volatility is increasing, where is it actually increasing? Which sectors? So the way we can compare this is by using our sector comparison. This is a snippet from our weekend video. This was June 26th. And you can see just how many markets here are still in the stage of accumulation, meaning that they're really chopping around sideways with a slightly bullish bias. We can see SPY still yellow, Q's still yellow, DIA still yellow, XLY still yellow, consumer staple still yellow, uh, biotech is yellow, which you'll see went green. It's one of the few markets, actually only market that went green. XLV still yellow, XLU still yellow, and XLRE still yellow. Now let me contrast that with today's screenshot. This is taken at the end of close today, June 28th, and you can see the difference here. The SPIES have now gone red, the Qs have now gone red, DIA has now gone red, then these markets have remained uh, red, but XLY has now also gone red, XLF remains red, XLP remains in a stage of accumulation, so that's one market that stayed the same both through the weekend as well as today. XLC remains in the red territory, IBB Biotech is the one market that's gone green. So for those of you looking for a bullish place to participate in, IBB would be the sector to try and focus in on. Then XLV remains yellow, but XLE has now gone red. You can see that right here. XLB remains red. XLU has remains the same, but XLRE here has also changed. So to summarize this, the following markets have now all transitioned to a stage of deceleration, meaning we expect bearish continuation in each one of these markets. The SPY, the Qs, DIA, XLY, XLE, and XLRE. So from that regard, we now know places where we can focus. We now know places where volatility is increasing. If I also show you the live scanner to help drive this point home, this is what our live scanner looked like today that contributed to those 200 plus trades that you saw right here, 224. The markets that actually triggered were some fairly large cap names. They weren't just your small mom and pop type of names. You had the likes of Costco, Salesforce, Cisco. You had AMD. You even had the index markets here. You had SPY. You had uh, DIA. You had Qs also hit our live scanner. You had AMD. You had Microsoft. You had T-Mobile, Qualcomm, Eli Lilly. So all across the board here, you had quite a few large cap names that actually triggered via our live scanner and presented different trade opportunities to take advantage of the volatility. So it gives you an idea of where volatility is increasing. How is it increasing? Now the question comes in, which are the setups that actually take advantage of this volatility? And for that, I think there's really three setups worth paying attention to right now. The first setup I think is a fairly common one, the opening range breakout setup. This is working well on the S&P and the Dow so far. 
I used the back tester not too long ago, ran it on all four index markets to basically come to this conclusion right here. These are the two markets to focus in on if you are looking to trade the ORB strategy. If I come into a chart first, so I can go through this side by side, on a one minute chart inside of the S&P 500, that first ORB setup came with this candle right here where price action broke below our opening range. So right around 709, I think this was, 707 actually, where that setup triggered, and that was at a price of right around 39.19 on the S&P 500. We closed at 38.28. So in terms of giving you a nice early heads up, the opening range breakout strategy was a pretty good one for that. Now the next setup we have available to us is our volatility box fade setup. This is a counter trend setup where we're looking to try and play moves away from the volatility box. So again, coming back inside of the chart of the S&P 500, if I start by loading the scalper box here, you can see how with today's volatility, the scalper basically was broken out in that 7 to 8 a.m. Pacific hour. We had our first setup right here where we were looking for a bounce, and that bounce never came. Instead, price action went outside of our clouds. So with this stop out, this is our first sign that, hey, fades aren't necessarily working. Now, that brings me to the next setup as well, and then I can just transition to our charts, which is our volatility box trend setup. This is a trend following strategy. So again, to highlight, this is a counter trend strategy. This is a trend following strategy. So in the direction of the trend, and we're looking to play moves into the volatility box using our squeeze indicators. Take a look at when that setup triggered today. Here was example one, here was example two, here was example three, and we also had a fourth setup, but this one didn't quite meet my rules. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So in terms of our trend setups, we had one, two, and three nice opportunities. In terms of our fade setups, we had one setup here, which was a stop out. We had another setup in the subsequent hour using the aggressive volatility box after adapting to volatility, which also ended up going outside of the clouds. So there that ended up bringing us to the conservative box uh, to basically conclude the day in terms of using our volatility models. The trend setup though was much better today. Trying to fade that trend was not a good idea in today's case and that led to a series of stop outs there, one and two. However, the trend setup here was a nice setup. We had our slingshot squeeze and we had the squeeze signals indicator. Both give us signs that, hey, we're looking for the squeeze to fire short. And you can see that's basically how that move ended up playing out. Of course, getting short at any point today, we saw even the opening range breakout was a good move. So I'm not too sure that you can gain too much from saying, oh, this is a perfect short side opportunity. It's more so when the triggers actually present themselves. And so that happened here, here, and here. So those are the different setups that I think you might find helpful when trying to take advantage of the current volatility. I'll leave links that break down each one of these setups in a little bit more detail, going through specifics like rules, things to be on the lookout for, and just any caveats that you might want to pay attention to. This video is more so around uh, which setups to pay attention to, and more so which markets to also pay attention to. Now finally to conclude, one other point that I think some of you might find useful, and this is more for swing traders, if you come into the daily time frame chart on the ES futures, we're now starting to see a bit of resistance right up here with this double wick. The current candle with today's close looks really nice from a bearish side setup. So any pullbacks near that 38.80 mark, really near the market pulse line, 38.96 is where the market pulse at. Those would be some nice opportunities to try and get some short side setups. The reason why I think we may actually get that opportunity is we're still very much respecting this bear flag. So if in this bear flag, we get a small little bounce here, maybe an inside candle where we're tagging the market pulse. I think that would make for a nice anticipation trade looking to play a break of this uh, trend line right here. Again, targeting that downward 1272 at 3730 inside of the ES futures. And this is how that same setup looks like inside of the SPY ETF. So still that same bear flag looking for a pullback near that 387 mark, which would be the low of this candle and trying to build a short position there, maybe something similar to the butterfly that we crafted last time to play uh, this break right down here, which was again, another trend line break, looking to play that move. All right, I hope you found this video to be helpful for those of you looking to trade and profit from this volatility. And hopefully you have a few more setups along with a few different places that you can focus on applying those setups. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.